Welcome to a very quick and dirty history of electrochemical activation, or ECA for short. It might be exciting, but it's not exactly new. For example, in the early 1800s, there were quite sophisticated electrochemical cells being produced for experimentation. Way back in the 1500s, an English chemist called William Gilbert was conducting experiments with magnetism, and he's now known as the father of magnetism. It was his work that led to others experimenting in the wondrous new properties of electricity. By the mid-18th century, huge steps had been taken to examine the properties of magnetism and electricity, and even basic generators were being produced. For example, the first condenser was produced by the end of the 1700s. However, despite the huge gain in knowledge of electricity and generators, it wasn't until the 18th century that the Italian physician Galvin established a link or a bridge between electricity and muscular contractions. And using frogs, he was able to demonstrate contraction when electricity was applied. It was also in the 1800s that the English chemists William Nicholson and John Ritter succeeded in separating water into hydrogen and oxygen by electrolysis, something that many of us do as school children when we're doing our first experiments in electrolysis. Soon after that, Ritter discovered the process of electroplating, which is now used universally around the world. He observed that the amount of metal deposited and the amount of oxygen produced depended upon the distance between the electrodes. The early 1800s also saw an explosion in the discoveries in electrochemistry. There are far too many to mention, but probably one of the most notable was Michael Faraday. He started his work on electrolytes in 1832, and what he wrote then is still true today. He discovered that electrical force did not apply at a distance upon molecules as had previously been thought, but it only acted when electrical current was passed through um, a conducting medium. Secondly, he found that the amount of decomposition was directly related to the amount of electricity being applied through the solution. These became Faraday's laws of electrochemistry. In the 1990s, Professor Vitold Bakhir, working from his laboratory in Moscow, published a number of scientific papers and patents that identified how analyte and catholyte solutions could be produced in an electrical, electrochemical cell, which he called a FEM, flow-through electrolytic module. His work springboarded a number of other research projects and companies producing electrochemically activated solutions. And today there are many companies around the world working in the field of electrochemistry, from the production of hydrogen in fuel cells for cars, through to analysis equipment, electroplating system, diagnostic, high-grade macro and micro coatings, right through to the treatment of water, hospital infection control, or surface hygiene products based upon that 200 plus year old principle of electrochemistry and electrochemical activation. I hope this gave you a brief insight to the history 
the future is probably even more exciting. Thank you.